perpetrated. Today in Across the Fence, we'll learn about young Vermonters who are getting their start in agriculture with an incentive and an education. It's a unique program that offers young farmers financial capital and financial literacy. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Most people are familiar with an IRA, an Individual Retirement Account, but you may not have heard of an IDA, an Individual Development Account. UVM Extension Center for Sustainable Agriculture offers individual development accounts to young Vermonters who are interested in agriculture. Across the Fences, Keith Silva tells us more. Come on, girls. I'm uh, Ethan Jeffrey, 17 years old. Ethan Jeffrey doesn't act as age. We have eight beef. I have 15 pigs, 14 turkeys, and we have full line hay equipment, full line corn equipment. So I consider myself a farmer. I mean, I put up a lot of hay in the summer. I, I work the long hours. It's not as long as some farmers, but we put in long hours. With a little help from his dad, Jeffrey farms 50 acres on his grandfather's old dairy farm. The herd was sold over a decade ago. What was once idle is now in use again, thanks to Jeffrey's grit and his grandfather's grace. Really, it's all possible because of my grandfather. If, we didn't, if he hadn't had to farm and had all the equipment that we did, I would not be where I am today. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, he's helped me out a lot over the years. I'm really grateful for him. Ooh, guys. Jeffrey knows it takes more to farm about? than opportunity and determination. Farming is business. I know how to raise animals and I know how to grow crops, but the business was where I was a little fuzzy. I mean, I knew here and there. I need the Youth IDA program because they're giving me skills that I'm gonna need when I get to be as big as I wanna be. The Vermont Youth Agriculture Individual Development Account Program is run by the University of Vermont Extension's Center for Sustainable Agriculture. The program offers participants business management so training, financial literacy, and a two-to-one match. We want you to know that when you save, it has huge payoffs in the long run. Helping UVM now, Extension out on the financial side of the ledger is Joe Hicks. He's the director economy. of Tangible Assets a program and run by the Community assets. Economic Development so Division of the Central Vermont Community programs. Action Council. We put a carrot out in front of them. For every dollar that they save, we match it with two. Um, usually one federal dollar and one state dollar. In this instance, with the Farmers IDA, it's been uh, given from various organizations as grants. And so we have that carrot that if they'll save 500, we'll turn it into 1500 And then we provide them financial education because we want them to have the acumen to keep their asset and to make it continue to generate income for themselves. For Hicks, there's more to this program than building assets. Participating in Vermont Youth Ag IDA banks intangible values as well. It's much easier to train someone how to save, how to do something, how to create a business stream than untrain someone. So we like to give them the tools right up front. We want them to understand things like credit building so that they can make the moves that will benefit them for a lifetime, helps them get into the right groove. So it is worth doing the work that it takes to get that match of money. Now what we're hoping you won't do. Those two there, I traded for a farm all, a 1940 farm all age. With the money Jerry earns from the Vermont Youth Ag IDA program, he plans on buying a new bale wrapper. But that's short term. It should come as no and surprise sure that Jeffrey's enough. got but big plans for this farm. I be, eventually I want to have 60 to 100 beef and I want to raise three to 500 hogs a year. So when you get to that size, you need like a really good sense because you're going to be purchasing more equipment updating your equipment and stuff, you're gonna have loans to pay and stuff like that. So you really need to know, make sure you have enough money and you really need to know how to budget it really, really well. The IDA program made me come back and look at what I really wanted. What was gonna be a bigger asset to me? What was gonna last longer in terms of value? What was gonna keep hold its value? What was gonna, in fact, make money for the business? There's 10 acres at my house 
Only 17 years old, and Ethan Jeffrey has become a savvy businessman. Not to mention a hardworking Vermont farmer. In Addison, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, joining me now are two key members of the Youth Agriculture IDA program. Ali Zapparo is the program coordinator with UVM Extension Center for Sustainable Agriculture. And Mary Niebling is the director of community and economic development at the Central Vermont Community Action Council, which oversees the funding of the IDA program. Welcome to both of you. Thanks. Thanks. Mary, when and how did the concept of IDAs come about? It came about in the 19, early 1990s with a man called um, Michael Sheradden, mm -hmm. who was a professor at the University, Washington University in St. Louis, and he talked about the possibility of lower income, lower wealth individuals having the same access to what you mentioned before, IRAs, mm -hmm. um, but in a different form. So uh, access to an account and incentives to help them save. So this program puts together um, incentives by matching people's savings with financial education and gives people the tools that they can use and learn about to put to, um, save money for um, their future and gives them hope. And so, Ali, um, when did IDAs for Beginning Farmers start, and is there a history to that kind of program? Yeah, um, in 2008 in the Farm Bill, they included a provision that uh, was going to start several different pilot programs around the country. Um, unfortunately, it was never appropriated funding in the annual appropriations. Uh, so uh, an organization out in California, California FarmLink, um, applied for a beginning farmer and rancher uh, development grant, and, uh, and they got it. And um, we uh, have started a few different programs around the country. And uh, you know, really, it's 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 a very new concept, um, and and hopefully it will grow. Mm -hmm. And so, just as a sidebar, who are the the people who are interested in this? I mean, how how do you get the farmer who might be interested, the young farmer, into the program? Um, well, there's uh, you know, we did a significant amount of outreach, and uh, we uh, reached out to different organizations, schools, uh, nonprofits. Um, within the UVM extension networks uh, and throughout, through other organizations around the state um, to uh, really promote the program and talk to you know, young farmers or young aspiring farmers about the program and, and uh, we reach them through those, those channels. Are there other national partners in the AGIDA pilot program or is, is Vermont's program different from around the country? Yeah, we have um, uh, about 10 partners around the country uh, in states like Minnesota, Iowa, New Mexico, California, um, and we are all starting our own pilot IDA programs through mm -hmm. the BFRDP grant that I talked about earlier. Um, we communicate with each other once a month via uh, phone conference and uh, have uh, had an, an in-person meeting. Um, essentially, we're a group of peers working on our own programs. Um, and so they are doing the same thing that we are, which is starting a pilot program to establish some measures and best practices. And so who pays? Um, our particular program uh, is funded, uh, both the, the labor and also the match, through several different channels. The BFRDP grant covers uh, a lot of the, the actual um, program itself. Mm -hmm. And then the match uh, was significant uh, portion of it. And we raised that through um, Select Design, which is a design firm here in Burlington, held a fundraiser. Uh, and we were the beneficiaries. We raised a good chunk of that through that. Um, and then other foundations um, like High Meadows Fund and uh, a couple of other private foundations. Cabot has been very generous in donating funding and uh, in-kind donations for food for our meetings and uh, Yankee Farm Credits, another. So it's, it's really been um, uh, quite a community effort. Well, let's talk, Mary. Maybe you can start, but I'd like to ask both of you this question. How do young farmers benefit from a specific program that's geared toward their business? Well, first they learn about financial literacy. Um, a lot of us growing up had no direction. Exactly. It's a, good, a lesson that everybody could use. Right. So we find that both with the youth and the adults mm -hmm. um, that we work with, um, the need for learning about budgeting, um, understanding what comes into the house, what goes out, 
um, also about credit cards and debits and how to work with a bank um, and um, how to understand your credit report and other financial matters. So that's one piece and our um, my colleague Joe Hicks has been teaching that class um, and then we also um, have a bank that um, holds the accounts, so the match goes into match savings goes into the bank mm -hmm. and matches people's savings. So you want to talk about the business part? Uh, yeah, we um, have a lot of experience at UVM Extension in running farm businesses. So uh, Mary Peabody, who uh, works with you know beginning farmers, uh, has been teaching online courses for the students, and she's really done. Um, quite a bit of work of putting together an online course uh, that's based on another beginning farmer program that she runs. So that's the business piece that they get. And farming is different than other entrepreneurs. Yeah, farming is a, it's a different uh, business. First of all, it's very capital intensive, so you need quite a bit of money to begin. Um, second, it uh, takes all of your time. Farmers are jack of all trades. Um, they are the business managers, they're the laborers, they're the marketers, promoters, and pricers. They um, you know, really have to be very versatile. So traditional IDA programs are tough to make it to these workshops because they are working all day long. Right. And they need, uh, again, a significant capital infusion. So this, this is important, uh, even more so with farmers. Um, and they need good business plans to get loans. So these, um, this program really helps them leverage that. Yeah, as the young man said in the, in the video, He's going to make a decision, do I invest in, in animals, do I invest in tractors, yep. you know, what's the best move? That's right. I mean, it's a really, and the other thing about farming is uh, you, have, you have really tight margins, so you have to be very careful about uh, how you're running your business. So we work with them and talk to these students about where's the most wise place to put your resources, where, when, where are you going to make an investment that really will get you the most in the long run um, and will help you build your assets in the future. And so Mary, how did Central Vermont Community Action Council connect with UVM Extension on this program? Well, we've been doing IDAs with adults um, throughout the state since 2000 um, and in our region in Washington, Orange and Lamoille County since um, 1997. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of experience with um, working with financial literacy and helping people save. Um, and UVM Extension got a hold of us because um, they had heard of this. Um, and we're also a very small state, so mm -hmm. word spreads. And we began conversations. Um, and then it took until um, Allie and her colleagues were able to raise the money to make the program go. And so Allie, how successful has the program been? Oh, it's been uh, amazing. You know, we have 17 participants who will finish the program with business plans, with their match, um, and will start their businesses. Or if they already have businesses, will be able to start a new enterprise. Um, you know, they've, uh, in the past year, I've seen them grow. Uh, some of the students had no experience farming at all and just thought maybe they'd give it a try. Uh, one in particular is from Montpelier, and he's working with a teacher there on um, vegetable production for an, a value-added product. So he's gone from uh, just a, you know, a budding interest to He's spent the past year, um, you know, budgeting and actually growing, producing and managing his business. So um, I think in the next month or so, he's going to have a product, a value added product ready to sell on the shelves. So, um, you know, that's that's an amazing success. And then we have people like Ethan, who uh, came from comes from a farm family and is really good in the production area, but it's just tightening up his business skills. So um, all of our participants had individual needs. Some are similar to each other, um, but they've all improved and really are coming out uh, well-rounded and educated in all of the areas that they need to be, and we'll have that capital infusion as well. Um, and one of the best parts about the program is the peer um, gatherings that we've had, a few workshops where everyone gets together and they bounce ideas off of each other. And the difference between when they first met to when they met a month ago with Joe is just amazing. You know, these kids are confident, they're more grounded in what they want to do, and they know each other and can ask each other. So when we had a break the first time, <laughs> they were hardly talking to each other. And by the, you know, the second meeting a year later, 
um, you know, they, I couldn't get them to stop talking so we could continue <laughs> the class. Ali, how can people find out more about the program? Well, they can go to our website, which is through uh, UVM Extension uh, under Youth, and they'll be able to find it under the Youth Ag IDA. Um, or they can call me anytime. Uh, my office number is 802-656-9139, and uh, I'd be happy to talk to them. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on the program today. Thank you. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.